Well, I thought I'd make a video. I'm in the process of fixing an Amiga 500, which has had um, quite a few problems. Um, briefly, uh, blown DRAM chip down down here. One of these was bad. The ROM chip that was in there was a uh, someone had replaced the ROM, and the actual ROM was bad. So I'm assuming they plugged it in backwards. Um, the Gary chip that sits on this riser board again will only get me to the grey screen when the, the machine resets so I initially went from a red screen when this was bad, fixed that, then this went to a green screen when this was bad and then I got to the grey screen when this was bad with all those things replaced um, the machine now does boot but the floppy drive that was in there um, has just given up the ghost on me now for a while um, I was working in data centers and tech companies where they were often quite old machines lying around and often being turfed and I used to pick up the floppy drives in them for the very purpose of fixing these old machines because floppy drives from the early 90s are much more useful for old machines than any floppy drive you're likely to find in any machine these days primarily because the ones these days are hardwired to the IBM PC standard uh, whereas drives from an earlier time had at least some option of them being used in other systems so often say Amigas, Ataris, um, synthesizers, anything with an embedded floppy uh, that wasn't specifically an IBM PC often had different settings so you can't pick up a normal PC floppy and jam it in here and it's not just to do with the SDHD uh, issue. Now if you look online there's a, a list of drives which are known to be useful for the Amiga and one of the ones I found was a an Epson Epson SMD 340, which these actually came out of a data center PC at a telecom company, and pretty much brand new. They've spent their life in a clean room, no dust, um, very little use, and mm. all good. But if you look at the website, which lists which machines are which um, drives are usable, this thing ever focuses. Here we go, Epson SMD 340. Works unmodified, nope. Can it be modified? Nope. Um, that's actually not true. Uh, there's a few people online asking about these drives and whether they can be used, and the answer is generally no. Uh, uh, it is, it, they are actually usable, and here's how you do it. On the back of the drive, there's a jumper block. Uh, it's this, this sort of flexibility that's missing on the newer drives. There's no jumpers. It's just set to PC. So you need two jumpers on here. You need... I'll try and get this at a better angle. You can kind of see it. So the pins are numbered, um, bottom row first, one, two, three, jumper four and five, and leave six, seven, eight empty. And on the top row, you pretty much leave nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen empty, jumper four, uh, fourteen and fifteen, and leave sixteen empty. Now, when you plug that drive into your A500, it will boot, load, and generally behave. Some of the drives from this era had the problem where the, the the motor basically never turns off, which can be a bit annoying. Um, I found a, a Sony disc which I thought was going to be a winner, but it had the problem where it never never turned the drive motor off. And it's from an era that's slightly too modern, so there's no no easy way to modify this. So again, that was a useful drive, but a little bit of a pain. Um, so when I got onto these, again. Uh, with the jumper set like that the, the motor turns on and off as required the only problem was that it didn't the Amiga did not detect when you changed the disc so if you ever got to the workbench screen saying please insert, insert your workbench discs and you change the disc the Amiga would never notice so the only option there was to power it off so that is an easy fix uh, you just lift up this plastic shielding here um, you probably see it through there and you solder a a little wire from pin 34 on the uh, on the back of the data header pin 34 all the way along to pin 2 now pin 2 only connects to I think it is pin 2 on the on the jumper block so make sure there's no jumper in there and all you're doing really is diverting the disk change signal from pin 34 down this wire to pin 2 and out to the Amiga which is where it expects it um, there's two two ways that machines can detect if the disk is uh, of the drivers ready, one of which is actually a drive ready signal, the other one is a disk change signal and PCs 
Uh, PCs use one, the Amiga uses the other, but effectively that is pulses on a wire. So as long as the right pulse gets to the right pin, the machine is happy. So I'll just plug this together. Um, I'll put it back in its case. And I'll just fire this up just to show you that it works. If it's going to let me put it back in without getting the shield in court. Okay, so one Epsom 3 SMD 340. Now it's, it's quite common to get the, the floppy cable in backwards on these drives. If you do, um, you won't actually cause any damage, or you get the ribbon the wrong way up. You won't get you won't cause any damage, but the disk drive will run continually and the Amiga won't notice there is a floppy there. So it's easy to do, but doesn't cause any problems if you do manage to do that. So it's hooked up. Let's flick the power switch. And monitor lights up. And soon. Ah, yes, you do need a disc. Okay, well, there we go. Focusing on this camera, this phone's not too great. I'll insert the disc now. It notices and boots. And there we have it.